I, I want to share a word today. Hopefully that will prove to be a blessing to, um, to all in the house. That word is found in Matthew's writing 28th chapter. And I want to read, beginning at verse 18, Matthew 28, beginning at verse 18 and following, you will find these words. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, all right. teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Thank you so much. I want to talk about Christianity. Christianity. Christianity is the move of God in the world today through the Lord's visible body called the church. God is still on the move. Christianity is being challenged today. And even many church-going people are taking positions against what they say they believe. All right, all right. Pastor Lovelady reminded us how many pastors and how many churches have quit in the last 10 years or so. Many church doors have closed. One report said about 300 churches a year are closing doors. Something is wrong. When we confess to have this great mandate from the Lord, and yet it seems there we are, we are moving in the wrong direction. Well, well. Listen again to what the Lord says. I have the authority that has been given to me. Mm -hmm. All authority is given to me. All right. And with that authority, he declares to his disciples their assignment. Go into all the world. All right. Make disciples. All right, all yes, right. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son mm -hmm. and of the Holy Spirit. And while you're at work, don't worry about it. All right. Lo, I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, yes, always. Yeah. That word always is a word I think we ought to we should pay some attention to All right. this afternoon, all way. Mm -hmm. Always a long time. Yes, it is. I remember, I remember when we first uh, got a telephone in our house. That's been a few birthdays ago. 
I remember we were impoverished people and we had what was called a party line. Yes, sir. Young folk don't know anything about. Anybody remember party line? When you had a party line, that meant you couldn't use the phone all the time because you shared a line with somebody else. And quite often, that other party, that other person would be on the line. And I can remember picking up the phone and becoming frustrated and saying, why don't y'all hurry up and get off the phone? I want to talk to my girlfriend. I want to lie to her. You did too. I said to our church, I think it was sometime recently, maybe this morning, that uh, we used to say, I love you forever. And I don't know how many girlfriends we've had since then. So forever wasn't a long time, was it? Forever is too big for you to handle forever. It's too big for me to handle. Only God can handle forever. And so Jesus says, remember, I have authority, and I will be with you forever. I will be with you always, so you don't have to worry about it. We should be encouraged. We should be excited that the Lord has factored us into his economy for the saving of the world. So who is this Jesus who says, all authority is given unto me? May I just tell you, he is the Son of God. He is the incarnated one. He is the word made flesh. He came into the world to save sinners. Many times people say, well, you know, they quote the King James translation of John 3, 16. And um, Jesus says, according to that translation, that, um, you know, I am the only begotten son of God. As he points to himself. He declares himself in that translation to be the only begotten son of God. The the problem is uh, that translation is not not the best translation at that passage. For that word only begotten uh, actually translates from the Greek text uh, monogenes, and monogenes means one gene. So when Jesus points to himself as the son of God, what he really says is that I'm the same as my father. All right, all right. As a matter of fact, in the 300s, there, there was a great discussion, there was a great argument about the person of Christ. Right. Think about it for a moment. Church folk arguing about who Jesus is. Yeah, well. Some people said, well, he is like God. Right. And others said he is the same as God. And this matter was not hammered out until 325 in a place called Nicaea when Constantine, the emperor of Rome, called for all the church leaders to come to one place and to hammer out this argument about the person of Christ. It was settled uh, as the parties came together and thought about the truth of the word that he is God. All All he had to do was think about what John said. In the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Get this about the word. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. All right. And so in that meeting in 325, uh, the fathers, the leaders of the church, 
agreed that Jesus is not like God, but that he is God. You are a son of God. I'm a son of God. John 1, 12 says, but to as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the children, the sons of God, to those who believe on his name, even to those who believe. You believe, don't you? Yes. On his name. That makes you a son of God, but not like Jesus. See, you are, and I am, we are adopted. We are brought into the family. But this Jesus, who said all authority is given unto me, he is the Lamb of God. Right. He is, according to the right of revelation, the Alpha and Omega. All right. He is the first and the last. Matter of fact, the Bible says he is life. Right. He is life for you and he is life for me. And it is he who declared to his disciples all authority yes. is placed in my hands. Yes. And with that authority, I'm commissioning you as you go to make disciples. Right. I want you to think about the framework of those words just for a moment. Because Christianity had its birth right. when the church was born in A.D. Mm -hmm. 30. All right, all right. Jesus had tabernacled with his disciples. He had taught them. He had preached to them. They had, they had observed him. They had watched him as he did miracles. You know he changed water to wine. Right. You do know that he opened the eyes of blind men. Yeah, yeah. You do know that he healed the sick. You know he made the lame to walk. You do know he raised the dead. Jesus has power. I know there are a lot of runarounds today that want you to think that they can do all of these things, but can't nobody do me like Jesus. All authority, all power, he said, is given unto me. His father. Place that authority in his hand. Uh -huh. He came into the world to save sinners. Mm -hmm. Set up his headquarters in a place called Capernaum. Mm -hmm. And I thank God today that I've been blessed to go there. You don't have to go there to know who Jesus is. Right. But I thank God that uh, I've been able to walk where he did walk. Right. Even in the city of Capernaum. He, right. he made Capernaum his headquarters. And from there, he, he did much and great work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think he did all of his work in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But may I just tell you today, very little as it relates to how much he did was done in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Most of his work was done outside of Jerusalem. All right, all right. Galilee. He even did some work in Samaria. Decapolis and Perea. I tell you, Jesus was a miracle worker. If we could call the road, blind men would come and say, I can see now. Lame men would come and say, I can walk now. The son of the widow and name would say, but I'm alive. Now, I tell you, Jesus, can't nobody do it like Jesus. And, and you know, you know, when I think about he set his ministry headquarters in Capernaum, but he also went to Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. And you remember when he went to Jerusalem, how he took authority and chased wrong people out of the Lord's right place. Right. The worship place is the right place. Oh, yes. But sometimes wrong people come in to do the wrong thing. Some people paint pictures of Jesus. It's a feminine looking white boy with blue eyes and long blonde hair. But may I tell you, that's not how Jesus looked. That's not the Jesus whom I serve. He was not an effeminate looking man. You see, he was bold enough to take a whip and to whip men out of the temple. May I just tell you, that's a man. Jesus was is a real man yeah. 
And so in Jerusalem is the place where finally he was crucified. Yeah, yeah. You know he was crucified. Oh, yes, yes, sir. You know he died on yes. a cross. Uh -huh. yes. You know they nailed his hands. Oh, yes. You know they nailed his feet. All right. And the old preacher said he hung him high and dropped him low. Yeah, yeah. You know he died. Yes, yeah. But he didn't stay dead. All right. He didn't stay dead. He only needed that grave. It was borrowed. He only needed it just over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Got up from the dead. Yes, sir. With all power, all power. in his hand. And we hear him saying in the text, I give authority to you all right, all right. to go and to make disciples. Yes. Let me just tell you, if you want to give me some money and you don't have it, you can't give me any. All right. That's right. That's right. That's right. When Jesus says, I give you power, I give you authority, yeah, yeah. he could do it because he had all authority. Yes, sir. Yes. And so he enabled his disciples to make a difference in the world. All right. Think about that just for a moment. Twelve men. All right. He didn't have a church full of folk. Twelve men. All right. He didn't have a great uh, following amassed around him as he trained and discipled uh, privately. Twelve men. All right. But when he told them what to do, yeah. those twelve men made a great difference. Yeah. And the world in which they live. Mm -hmm. May I just say today, I believe mm -hmm. that if church folk would stand up, I believe if church folk would speak up, right. I believe if church folk would just go on and act right, I almost said act up, but somebody might take that wrongly. All right. All right. But if church folk would just stand up oh, yeah. and do the right thing, oh, yeah. I believe we too can make a difference in the world but this Christianity this this move of God these whom the Lord called and factored into his economy for the salvation of men these these people who who believed on him may I tell you they made a difference in the world oh, yes. Yes. people were changed oh, yes. those who were immediate to Jesus were changed. You know, his brothers at first, uh, John lets us know his brothers at first had a little problem with Jesus. Right. They were a little jealous of Jesus. But, but thank God they looked at him long enough. And thank God they heard him long enough. And thank God John 2.22 reminds us something happened after the resurrection. They believed on him as they ought. You ought to say, thank the Lord. That the Lord changed the lives of people. Yeah, yeah. You, he changed the lives of his disciples. Yeah. Uh -huh. You do understand that there were some who were fishermen. And there was a tax collector in the bunch. And there were others. But may I just tell you something happened when Jesus stepped into their life. All right. Come and I'll make you to be fishers of men. At first, they didn't understand. At first, they didn't really know what to think. But they followed Jesus. Right. And ultimately, all of them gave their lives for the cause of Christ. Right. On the day of Pentecost, you remember that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. One man uh, who was a close disciple preached a great message. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible says 3,000 souls were saved. Mm -hmm. There's something about Christianity. There's something about the movement. There's something about it when the people of God take their stand and do the work mm -hmm. of ministry to win and disciple souls to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. His disciples became changed men. Mm -hmm. But not only did his disciples become changed men, you ever heard of a fellow by the name of Stephen? Stephen was one. He's not named in the immediate with the disciples. But somewhere around the crowd, Stephen heard the news. Yeah, yeah. And trusted Christ as his Savior. Oh, yeah. And loved the Lord so much so that he died for the cause. Oh, yeah. And became the first Christian martyr who put his life on the line for Jesus Christ. All right, all 
May I tell you there's something about Christianity. Oh, yeah. When people hear the word of God and believe on Christ, the Lord changes lives. Right. Not only were the disciples changed, and not only was it that Stephen was changed. You ever heard of James? The brother of Jesus, yeah, yeah. he was changed yeah, yeah. and became the bishop at the church in Jerusalem. All right. All right. May I just tell you what a difference the Lord makes in the life of one oh, yeah. who put their trust in the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know you know about Saul. Oh, yeah, yeah. Saul was one who stood when Stephen was being stoned and gave his consent. Yeah, yeah. He did not like the fact that people were talking about a risen Savior. Right. He didn't like the fact that people were talking about a Jesus. Right. And so he stood there and gave his consent when Stephen was being stoned. But he heard Stephen say something. Right. He heard Stephen say, Lord, don't put it on the account. Yeah, yeah. In other words, forgive them. They really don't know what they're doing. This man, uh, Saul, was there, and he was so outraged that he went and got legal authority that he might go about and arrest anybody whom he found calling on the name of Jesus. Right. And, and listen, in his own testimony, he said that many people were arrested. Many people were ill-treated. but Many people were cast into prison. Many people died early at the hands of this man. But then something happened. May I just tell you, when the Lord is on the move, God can change the most heart of hearts. And so while he was on his way to Damascus, you know, he met the Lord for himself. And then later when he gave his testimony, he said, you know, I'm a Jew just like you. Yeah, yeah. When the Jews rose up against him. Yeah. And he said, I persecuted the church just like you. Right. But then finally he said, but I met the Lord. All right. Something happens oh, yeah. when a man meets the Lord. Right. Yes, Christianity, this move, this movement yeah. of the Lord in the earth working through his church. You know, later on uh, in the history of the church, there were many emperors who came to the throne at Rome. All right. And some worked havoc on the church. All right. Some took Christians and used them for game. And some took Christians and killed them uh, and felt no pain. They were cold-blooded. Right. But thank God there were some emperors. Yeah, yeah. Who heard the word of God right. and opened their heart to Jesus Christ. Right. It was Constantine who came yeah. to the throne early 300 and put forth his edict in 313 and declared that Christians were to no longer to suffer persecution. All right. All right. May I just tell you God can make a difference? Right. You may know somebody right. who's hard hearted and mean. Yes, you may know somebody who's absolutely lost and walking in darkness. Well, well. But may I just tell you, if you just keep on preaching, All right. if you keep on witnessing, yeah. God just may turn that life around. All right. And so this movement, this Christianity has made a difference. Yeah. Go into all the world, make disciples. What the Lord said to his disciples was this. As you go, as you move about, as you spread out, you share the good news. All right. May I say to you today, God has factored you into that economy. Well, well. You're part of the church. All right. And God will have for you and for me to be witnesses everywhere that we go. All right. Christianity. What, what else has Christianity Done. Christianity has made a difference right. in the lives of people in the sense that Christianity uh, preached the sanctification of human life. Right. You see, early on, there were those who had no appreciation for human life. Well, well. 
I told you about the emperors. Yeah. And how they ill-treated believers. Yeah. I told you about the emperors. And, and you need to understand that sometimes they would take a believer and throw him to the line. Yeah, they, yeah. It was game to them. They had no appreciation for the sanctity of human life. But somehow Christians, even going through that kind of storm, mm -hmm. Christians, even though they were ill-treated, hunted down, Christian, held to their faith and declared that God is the author oh, yeah. of life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they preached it long enough. Yeah. Even though many of them suffered in their own bodies, they preached it long enough mm -hmm. until nations began to enact new laws. May I just tell you, God can make a difference. Yeah, yeah. If you need a difference in your home, God can make a difference. Yeah, yeah. You need a difference on your job, God can make a difference. All right, all right. You need a difference in your neighborhood, God can make a difference. Right. But the church must be on the move for Christ. All right, all right. And so that was a time when when uh, you remember Alexander the Great, he all conquered right. all of the known world. And, and he was a great uh, warrior. But I tell you, when he conquered the world, he brought something with him. Well, well. He brought some of the customs and practices uh, that, that was called Hellenism, well, well. which is the lifestyle of the Greeks. Yeah. And when he came and conquered the world, he brought with him and introduced to the parts of the world where he conquered all kinds of stuff. Well, well. If you ever do a study on the life of Alexander the Great, you'll discover that he liked men. All right, all right. Something wrong with that picture. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he, he argued that his soldiers uh, were like men as well. well, well. But may I just tell you, not only uh, that, and I'll come back to that, but you know that was a practice <laughs> Of uh, killing babies, all right, all right. infanticide. That, that you know, that were those who um, people would have babies born if the baby didn't look right. If the baby had something wrong with it, they'd take the baby out and kill it. Christians said that's wrong. All right. God is the author of life, yeah, yeah. and you ought not be doing that. And sometimes they would take the baby out and. Lead a baby out in the woods for the wolves and, and the dogs and, and all kind of wild animals. I tell you, that was a cruel period in their time, in the uh, season of early human history. People did some horrendous things. You know, it was not safe to be a baby. Sometimes people just didn't want babies, period. You think abortion is new? It's been around. But it was the church who argued against abortion. It was the church who argued the sanctity of human life. There is something about preaching the word of God. There is something about telling the world about a man named Jesus. And so the church argued against infanticide when babies were ill-treated and put to death because they were born sometimes and uh, their bodies didn't look like what the parents well, thought well, well. the older looked like. And, and then, and then that, were, that was this non-appreciation for human life when people were used for gladiatorial games. Right. Emperors would sit high with their wives, with their queens, and down in the arena, Christians would be made sport of and they would have to fight and they would have to you know, a stand that of being attacked and persecuted and, and all of that. And let me tell you, there are still folk today who play games with human life. These kind of things would probably be still going on all right. if Christianity had not made a difference in, in the world. There were those who practiced human sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would take a person and kill that person on an altar. Cut that person up in pieces. Well, well. And offer their blood to strange God. But Christians argued that that is wrong. 
And so over the course of time, nations began to change in their legislations. Laws began to be written on the books. Christians just simply argued, the Lord said, thou shall not kill. And when Christians saw babies being killed, Christians would say life belongs to the Lord. Right. When Christians saw uh, men and women in the arena being used for sport, Christians would argue only God has the right to take a life. Right. Right. Thank God today oh, yeah. that Christians have been on the move. Oh, yeah. And because Christians have been on the move, Things have changed. Right. But let's not hold you too long. Christians moving at God's command spoke out against homosexuality. All right. I told you about Alexander the Great. All right, all right. And there's some other men whose names ring loudly in the course of human history. Well, well, well. But what you don't know about many of them Many of them had men lovers. All right, all right. May I tell you, that's wrong. Yes. That's right. For the word of God says, if a man lies with another man as with a woman, the Bible says that's abomination. Well, well. May I just tell you, it was the movement of Christianity. All right, all right. It was Christians taking a stand in the face of even their own lives being put out. And declaring that homosexuality is a sin against God. You know there was a period when, when uh, homosexuality was so prevalent. Brought in by the Greeks and adopted by the Romans. That even uh, if you visit somebody's house. They'd have a picture on the wall of two men making love. Well I take that back. That's not love. Two men practicing sin. It was just so popular. Some people have whatnots. When I was a boy, we had whatnots. Anybody know what a whatnot is? At our house, we had whatnots. And, and whatnots would be little elephants or butterflies or whatever. And, and the, on the corner, in the corner, there'd be a whatnot chef. And, and mama said, don't y'all touch my whatnots. Well, I want to tell you, uh, that was a precious thing when we were coming up. But that was a time when whatnot would have been an illicit picture on the wall. And people would boast about the pictures on their wall. And they would have cups and glasses and they would have engraved on them all kinds of sex uh, practices. And they did not hide it from the children. It was the culture. It was a way of life. But then Christians came along and preached against that kind of life. Christians came along and preached against that kind of living. And when I was a boy, it was a, a, a crime for men to be together. Something has happened along the way. Maybe, just maybe. Our churches are not preaching what they ought to preach. I have seen in my own lifetime a change in the church. I remember as a boy I heard about Jesus. I heard about love one another as I have loved you. But today many of the messages are about health, wealth, and prosperity. And God wants to bless you. Yes, Let me tell you, he wants to bless you. But uh, he wants to bless you to walk uprightly and being filled with his spirit. All right. All right. Not the spirit of the world. Well, well. And so how is it, brothers and sisters, that we are going to help to effect a change in our time? Well, yes. yes, this this uh, a charge to keep our hair. Oh, yeah. A God to glorify. Oh, yeah. You and I have a calling on our lives. Oh, yeah. 
And that calling is to represent our Christ. Mm -hmm. And so listen to the words of Jesus. Oh, yeah. I give you authority. Oh, yeah. Go into all of the world. Well, well. And make disciples. Mm -hmm. Now disciple is a student. A disciple is a follower right. of Jesus. If you want people to stop mistreating babies, win them to Christ. If you want men to stop lying with men and women lying with women, keep preaching Christ. If you want men to learn to appreciate the fact that human life is valuable and that God is the author of life, keep preaching Christ. And so when I listen to the words of Jesus before he left and ascended back to his father. All right, all right. And when I hear Jesus saying go into all the world. All right. That means go to everybody. Yeah. Tell it everywhere that you go. Well, well. Men need to hear that on a hill called Calvary. Well, well. Something happened 2,000 years ago. Well, Men need to know that there is a weekend in human history yeah. that changed the course of all of human history. Oh, yeah, yeah. And may I just tell you, because the gospel was preached, oh, yeah. because Christ was presented, yeah. babies had a chance to live. Yeah. And may I just tell you, because Christ was preached, yeah. gladiator games came to a close. Yeah. And may I just tell you, because Christ has been preached, yeah. right. homosexuality was outlawed in many countries. Right. Right. But let's hold you too long. Oh, yeah. If we don't keep on preaching, yeah. if we don't keep on teaching, yeah. if we don't keep on presenting Christ, yeah. that old stuff will come back again. Yeah. Hold on. Oh. My brothers and my sisters. Yeah. And brother pastor, I know what you have been doing well, for 19 years. Yeah. Making your way to the pulpit. Yeah. Right. To declare to the hearing of the precious people of New Beginning well, well. what does says the Lord. Oh, yeah. And I know that every now and then yeah. you get a little disappointed. Well, well. I know that every now and then, oh, yeah. it looks like your la labor is in vain. But hold on just a little while longer because everything will be all right. Hold on. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. There's a man who needs to hear about Jesus. There's a woman who needs to hear about Jesus. Our sons and our daughters need to hear about Jesus. Preach him in the morning. Preach him in the noonday. Every time you have a chance, tell somebody about our Lord. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Anybody here know my Jesus? Anybody here know my Lord? Do you know how he died? Do you know that he was buried? Do you know that he's alive? Tell it! Everywhere you go, tell it when they want to hear you. Tell it when they don't want to hear you. Yes, Lord. And the Lord will. I said the Lord will. The Lord will bless you to see every now and then somebody come out of darkness to the marvelous light. Keep on Brother Pastor, shouting it out, he died. Some folk don't want to hear that, but he died. Some folk 
are tired of hearing that. But he died. He died. He died. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Yes, I needed a Savior. I needed a Savior. You needed a Savior. All of us have been in the dark. But thank God for the marvelous light. He's alive. He walks with me. He talks with me. He assures me that I am. I am his own. Keep the light shining. 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 Don't give up. Don't quit. Preach on. Preach on. And one of these old days, when your race is over and you leave your sword in the sand of time, you will hear the master's voice saying, Servant. Yes, Lord. Servant. Servant. Well done. 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 Anybody here want to hit a master? Say, well done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We live in a dark world, but there is a light. Jesus, he's that light. And the world needs to know who Jesus is. You know, I'm determined, predisposition. It really does not matter to me what others are doing, what they're doing down the street, around the corner. That doesn't bother me as it relates to what we're doing. I'm going to do one thing. I want to keep talking about Jesus. You can have all the money. You can have all the gold. You can have all the fame. You can have all the fortune. I, I, want, I want Jesus. I, no, no, no. If he never does anything else for me, he put food on my table. Yeah. I, I, I want us to think about the Lord has blessed us. But the Lord has has blessed us. About he put food on my table, shoes on my feet. I want you to think about what the Lord has done for you. And then I want you to make up your mind that you're going to serve. You're going to be a witness for the Lord. If you're here today and if upon your arrival you are not a Christian, you've been out of service, God has not been able to count on you. But you want to make a decision, a good decision, a right decision for Christ. The door of the church is open. If I never see another day, all right, all right. if I never see 
a smiling face If I never breathe another breath Or take another step I want to say thank you 